A 100 terahash S19 J Pro Bitcoin mining rig has a 0.0000000208% chance of mining a Bitcoin block, or 1 in 4,807,692,307. And this probability will continue to decrease over time as Bitcoin miners plug in more machines, increasing the total network hash rate, which in turn increases Bitcoin mining difficulty. Bitcoin mining pools allow individual Bitcoin miners to combine their hash power, working together to run the SHA-256 hash algorithm in order to increase their chance of adding new blocks to the Bitcoin blockchain and earn the 6.25 BTC block subsidy plus transaction fees. When a pool mines a block, each miner receives a share of the mining rewards proportional to the amount of hash rate they contributed to the pool. The primary benefit of mining pools is that it allows miners to generate revenue consistently, rather than having to rely on simply getting lucky and finding blocks on their own, which, when you don't have a significant amount of hash rate, will make your revenue wildly unpredictable and unreliable. There are multiple types of mining pools, each with their own set of trade-offs. But before we break them down, let's do an ultra-quick recap of how Bitcoin mining actually works. Bitcoin mining is the process of adding new blocks to the Bitcoin blockchain. This is done using the SHA-256 cryptographic algorithm in a process called proof of work. SHA-256 may sound intimidating, but it's actually quite simple. This is a one-way algorithm that takes an input of text and converts it into an output of 64 characters that looks something like this. Tweaking just one character in the input results in an entirely new output that bears zero resemblance to the previous output. This is a one-way algorithm. There's no way to work it backwards and find an input based on an output. If you want the output to meet a certain criteria, the only way to produce that output is to guess and check the input as many times as it takes in order to achieve the desired output. The Bitcoin blockchain, which is simply an ongoing ledger of transactions, is composed of individual blocks, which are new entries into that ledger. All of the data about the transactions within each block are run through the SHA-256 algorithm. For the block to be added to the ledger, the Bitcoin network requires that the SHA-256 output begins with a certain number of zeros. This is to ensure that no matter how much computational power is dedicated towards Bitcoin mining, whether it's a single ASIC or tens of thousands of ASICs across the globe, each Bitcoin block will take roughly 10 minutes to get mined. At the top of each Bitcoin block, miners include the nonce, which stands for number once. Bitcoin miners continuously change the nonce, then rerun the SHA-256 hash until the output has the number of leading zeros required by the network. Once they've found a nonce that delivers a valid output, they broadcast the new block to every miner and node on the network. Everyone else can then verify for themselves that the output is valid without having to continue hashing themselves. This is the process known as proof of work. The broadcasting of a block that has a valid output with the correct number of leading zeros is proof that the miner used enough computational power. As mentioned before, the number of leading zeros necessary for a block to get added to the chain changes based on if blocks are coming in faster or slower than the 10 minute time. If blocks are mined too fast, the amount of leading zeros required will increase, which makes it more difficult to find a valid output. This feature is called the difficulty adjustment and it occurs every 2016 blocks. The reason for the difficulty adjustment is so that the time between blocks remains relatively consistent and so that all 21 million Bitcoin don't get mined immediately. No matter how many people start mining Bitcoin, blocks won't get mined any faster and the last Satoshi won't get mined until the year 2140. Now that you have a basic understanding of SHA-256 proof of work and the difficulty adjustment, we can explain the four types of Bitcoin mining pools, the pros and cons of each, and common concerns with the status quo of mining pools. The four types are pay per share, full pay per share, pay per share plus, and pay per last in shares. The simplest is pay per share. With pay per share, contributing miners get paid consistently regardless of whether or not the pool mines any blocks. The pool pays out miners using a formula for projected miner revenue, Satoshis per terahash per day, a formula known as hash price. Side note, you'll most commonly see hash price referenced in a dollarized form, dollars per terahash per day, but for this demonstration we will keep it simple and use sats per terahash per day because the payouts are made in Bitcoin and this way we can avoid confusion caused by the BTC USD exchange rate. Based on current Bitcoin mining difficulty and the 6.25 BTC block subsidy, Hash price, excluding transaction fees, is roughly 184 sats per terahash per day. Using that formula, a miner with 100 terahash that is contributing to a PPS pool will earn roughly 18,400 sats per day in mining revenue. Notice I excluded transaction fees from that calculation, and that's where a full paper share pool distinguishes itself from a traditional paper share pool. Full paper share, 
FPPS includes transaction fees within minor payouts, hence the full prefix. Now, the amount of fees awarded to contributing miners is not based on the actual amount of fees in the blocks because again, with PPS and FPPS structure, miners are paid regardless of if the pool actually mines any blocks. As such, fees are paid out using a calculation based on the current fee environment. If fees end up being higher than initially projected, contributing miners might not be fully compensated for that. Granted, FPPS is still far superior to PPS because miners are at least mostly compensated for transaction fees. In the current fee environment, hash price is 209 sats per terahash per day. So that 100 terahash miner will earn roughly 20,900 sats per day from an FPPS pool. Next is pay per share plus. This is similar to FPPS, except transaction fees are not based on projections, but they are paid out based on the actual amount of fees earned from the blocks that the pool mines. Finally, we have pay per last in shares, PPLNS. This operates similarly to pay per share plus in that contributing miners are only paid out when the pool actually mines blocks. Each PPLNS pool operates within a specified window of blocks and the mining rewards are distributed based on the amount of hash rate, shares, a miner contributed during that window. This is best illustrated with an example. Let's call this pool X. Pool X is a PPLNS pool with a window of 100 blocks. This means that the pool pays out its miners for every block that the pool mines during a 100 block window. Let's say that during a 100 block window, pool X mines seven blocks. Then each miner that was connected to the pool for the entire window will receive the payouts from these seven blocks proportional to the amount of hash rate that they contributed. Transaction fees are included. Now let's say Bob is connected to pool X and halfway through the window, Bob disconnects to join a different mining pool. This is called pool hopping. At the end of the window, Bob will not receive any mining rewards, even if he was contributing when a few of those blocks were mined. In order to receive their payout, miners must be hashing to the pool for the entire duration of whatever the specified window is. This structure does two things. First, it disincentivizes pool hopping. You don't want to leave a PPLNS pool early and then miss out on mining rewards if blocks are found. Second, Contributing miners actually have to care if the pool mines any blocks as they don't receive payouts if no blocks are mined. This is a different incentive compared to the other pool models. However, the trade-off is that PPLNS pools need enough hash rate where they can find blocks on a relatively consistent basis. Otherwise, they'll be heavily reliant upon luck. The hottest topic surrounding Bitcoin mining pools right now is Oceans, a decentralized mining pool being spearheaded by Jack Dorsey and Luke Dasher. The status quo of Bitcoin mining pools has a few flaws as it pertains to trust and decentralization, which Ocean's mining pool is purporting to solve. These problems are custodial payouts, block templates, and transaction fees. Ocean's is unique in that miners contributing hash power to this pool receive their rewards directly from the Coinbase transaction of the Bitcoin network. The Coinbase transaction, not to be confused with the company Coinbase, whose name is derived from this feature, is the transaction in which the mining rewards are sent to the miner that added the block to the ledger. The current structure of mining pools is custodial in this manner. The pool operator receives the Coinbase transaction before distributing mining rewards to its contributors once they reach a certain threshold. Here's an example of the Coinbase transaction from a block mined by Oceans. You can see the many outputs going to over 700 different hash rate contributors. As of right now, the minimum threshold for receiving payouts through Oceans is roughly 1,048,000 sats. Such a threshold is designed to avoid small UTXOs which can cause issues for users as well as it being a less efficient use of block space. If you want to learn more about UTXOs, I recommend watching this video. The next problem is block templates. When miners are working on adding a block to the blockchain, they can choose which transactions they want to include in that block. With the current pool structure, pool operators are able to obfuscate which transactions are in the block while miners are hashing to solve that block. Hash rate contributors won't see what the block looks like until it actually gets mined. This leaves the door open for pool operators to censor certain transactions from being included in blocks. With Oceans, each miner will get to build their own block templates, including the transactions that they want to include. The last problem is transaction fees. As mining economics makes the transition to a 100% fee-based revenue model, ensuring that miners are properly compensated for transaction fees is critical. This is a similar structure to the pay per share plus in PPLNS in that mining rewards are based on the actual amount of fees that are included in the blocks that the pool mines. And for all intents and purposes, you can think of Oceans as a PPLNS pool. 
However, the non-custodial payout of mining rewards ensures that miners contributing hash to the ocean's pool receive 100% of their share of transaction fees without having to trust the pool operator. A real-world example of when this can be an issue occurred in September of 2023. The Bitcoin exchange Paxos accidentally way overpaid for a transaction, paying a fee of roughly $500,000 worth of BTC. The block that included that transaction was mined by F2 Pool. F2 Pool returned the accidental transaction fee to Paxos. Now, you may agree with this move. However, there quite clearly is a centralization problem with this setup. With a pool like Oceans, these transaction fees would be distributed to the contributing miners, and each would then be able to decide for themselves whether or not they want to return the excess transaction fee. Oceans is just one of many fascinating developments currently going on in the Bitcoin industry. If you want to stay up to date on all things Bitcoin, then make sure to click that subscribe button and go to the link in the description and subscribe to our free newsletter.